snap, everybody. I didn't realize my hair was doing some curly cue business. It's doing some curly cue. Yeah, you got oh, we're good. Oh, snap. Good morning. Guten Tag to you all, folks. Sorry. We're live. Our so expense I'm, I'm texting Gen Con fun. while we're on Gen Con. Isn't that fun? That's like Soup's meta. Meta no, is overlay meta since we're on Gen Con. Oh, I, I, I turned this one on. That's so weird. I don't know. So if, it's just sometimes it forgets. It decides, hey, we're on Gen Con. Is it here? It is here. Okay. Hey, okay. I turned it on, but whatever. Steve, I'm feeling much better. You sound you sound like <clears throat> your voice is like in the last stages of being crafted. It's it's the hockey you know I mean? of all the yeah, good yeah, the yeah, good yeah. colorful stuff. Yes. Uh I feel much better. I would I would venture to guess that it's one of those things where you're starting to feel pretty good, but if you went out and I'm like, I'm gonna try to go for a job, oh, you're yeah, gonna yeah. run you're gonna run you would die out of gas in your tank pretty fast. Yeah. But other than that, I feel much better. Pretty much. I think I broke my fever in the night because I woke up uh, just covered in swamp. Rather, rather wet. Yeah. Checks out. But uh, feeling much better. Indeed. So I've got some uh, lozenges and things here. Lozenges. Got some uh, coffee droppies so I don't, I don't uh, bother you all with that business. Indeed. Been uh, uh, getting hydrated, all that good stuff. We got so Sax Queen you. Kick Sand and we got uh, Big Steve it's up Big this. Steve. We, we got, got Kestrel. What up, Kestrel? Good, good. good. Uh, even the funny thing is, like, literally the exact same inflection. Yeah. Like, that's how similar we are. Yeah. We will, yeah, that Kestrel. Kestrel. Oh, gosh. We're the worst. Uh, and we the don't best. plan these things, folks. It's just. See, anybody name my hand, anybody name my hand, anybody name my hand, who wants to run Just happens. So, this is a, a new little <laughs> stream that we're, we're kind of trying out with the Gen Cons. Uh, uh, and Jen Con was gracious enough to let us give it a shot. So thank you for that. Um, we, you know, Mikey wanted to start mini painting more, and I mini paint on our yes. channel, on our YouTube know. channel at oh, home, yeah. and that's not ever going to stop. But you know, it's it's something we we kind of wanted to add another stream, but we kind of didn't really want to just like play games again. Um, oh. N nothing wrong with that, and we're honestly fine with doing that. But we're kind of like, you know, we already have th some of this business. We already have, yeah, three streams a week where we're just sitting there playing games, which is great. But we're like, you know, it'd be nice if we could kind of switch it up. Some so more difference, a little more. Cash. We're like, well, why don't we kind of have a, a nice, chill, brotherly painting stream? Since I paint a lot, like I've painted probably a couple hundred minis. Mike's painted like two. So we were kind of like, you got me beat. We can kind of have it where it's it's. I'm not a the expert by any stretch of imagination, but definitely me kind of guiding Mike through it, and then just kind of discussing stuff, having a discussion topic each day, yeah. um, and just talking about you know whatever we want. You all can bring the discussion up, and just kind of a nice chill painting stream um, yeah. because it's something we wanted to do more, and uh, uh, doing it on stream is a great like way coffee to coffee talk thing. Yeah, yeah. coffee talk, oh, coffee talk with oh, the Oh God, it's Barbara! Oh God, Barbara's here. <laughs> Great, great. Uh, anybody? Mike Gandalf is rad, by the way. Early '90s SNL. Anybody? Uh, he's alright. Like, nah, I did that. I did that like two or three years ago, and I'm already like, oh god, really? I want to repaint that this so is badly. Absolutely playable. No. Oh, for, for, it's definitely playable. I have some rando. I have some uh, War of the Ring minis uh, right up here because I, I have so been sorry. planning on painting those heroes for like three years now. And now I could probably bust through them really quickly and do them pretty darn pretty well. Pretty small. Like, but, uh, just, but, like, literally, like, this legless has been done for, like, three years. All I have to do is paint the base, and I still haven't done that. <laughs> Let's paint it this morning. Let's just get it done. Nope. Got to keep the mood going. <laughs> uh, and thank you, Sats. We said we're looking super crisp well, this morning. We, we are hoping so. Feeling quite crisp. We got that morning. When was the last time we streamed, like, in the morning? I don't know. Have we if ever? ever? Have we ever? We're going to stream in the morning during our 24-hour stream, but... yeah. All through the morning. Yes, indeed. So I, I it's it's probably that, that lovely morning light, you know? And the so, lovely morning glow. But yeah, so we're going to be painting, we're going to be painting some uh, minis from Simon's uh, game, uh, Rum and Bones, which is a game that is partially painted. And so we were like, oh, let's start with that because we both like that game. And it's partially painted. So this way we can kind of try and finish it up. So um, I, yeah, I guess we kind of just start. I think we should start. I think we so should start. So, our, our first kind of topic for today, hello, welcome to minis. This is my mini. This is my mini. They're on the sides that we're on, you get it? Isn't that convenient? No. No, I see. See, we crawl. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. No, you broke it. <laughs> Sorry. We're both trying to joke a little too hard. And what do I do? So, what you, do you I, just spread do it I, apart. How do I do it? Like how that? Do it? And then put it in the middle. And go, my. Whoa. Just make sure it's, it's secure. We've got this fancy there. pants oh, holder gosh, guy. This brush. Um, anyway, so there. You can see. Okie dokie, fam. Yeah, so like everyone. Do you guys dig the, the vibe? Dig the look? We are oh. painting uh, these undead guys. These are from the, what are they called? Bone Devils? I think they're the Bone Devils. Bone Devils. Bone uh, Devils. Faction of Rum and Bones. 
and uh, they bony. They are the they are the uh, the um, Jeffrey Rush type people from uh, Pirates oh, of the Caribbean. Right. Yeah, they're kind of the cursed. Pirates. Yeah, they're the cursed pirates. You know. So this guy, you see, he's got a big sword, and he's like, ah, he's all skeleton. He's got this kind of like big these big droopy pants on. Cool little cloak, and then he's got a sword that has a squid attached to it, which I think is funny. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So we have eight of these. We're not going to paint all eight of these today. We're going to work on kind of one at a time. In the future, we may do some, like, batch painting. Uh, and if I was doing these alone, I would probably paint, like, all the cloaks. So and newbie, all yeah. the da da you know? question, what does batch painting mean? So batch painting means you're painting a lot of the same thing. Uh-huh. All in a row. So essentially, like like these. This would be eight. Or if I'm painting... These are all identical. Tyranids or something like that. Yeah, they're basically all identical. Or at least they're not significantly different enough where you have to then do it separately. So... So what's the method there? Is it just like you do one specific part? That's how I everybody do it. That way? Yeah, so that's how I would do it. I would paint the cloak. Switch out, paint the cloak, paint the cloak, paint the cloak. Once I'm done with all the cloaks, then I go on, I'll paint the bones. Paint the bones, paint the bones, do all the bones. Then I'll paint the pants, and I'll do that all the way through. And it's just a quicker way, because you're not constantly having to switch out, um, you're not having to switch out uh, uh, paint at stuff. all, and all stuff right. like that. So you can kind of just go like that. And then you can like wash them all at the same time. It's just a, a quicker way to do it. I'm not very Ooh. good at batch painting. I tend to take too long on stuff, especially it's like, like these guys are just like your troops. Like they don't need to be great. Um, sure. But I tend to get perfectionisty with it and and start. Well, you give you give a poop, you know. So we give a poop. But yeah, so we're gonna be uh, painting these big Ooh. ones. So Mikey, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start with the barns because barns why are, are we starting with the bones, Mikey? We kind of talked about it in our. Um, you start with the bones because unless we're making black bones, <laughs> it's going to be a lighter color. And in general, it's nice to work lighter to darker because it is harder to cover up darker colors. Yes, it is. It is. Yeah. Indeed. So yeah, we're going to do that. So that way we can be kind of sloppy with the white. Because uh, it'll get covered up. Because it'll just get covered up. Exactly. So okay. we're going to use um, something called Ushapti Bone is what we're going to use. Ushapti it's just kind of like, bone. not super, super light white but it's a very light cream which we're gonna be darkening this with some wash anyway and coming back and highlighting so is there like um, such a thing as like purple wash yes so, uh there is one over there it's called drukey eye violet there's <laughs> washes in literally every single color oh, it'd be cool to give them like a hint of purple because i like that the, the minis themselves so what do you want to get a hint of purple to to their bones we could just like it ever so get, slightly so what we could do afterwards once we're done with all the highlights so they're kind of like covered in algae Okay, we could do that as well. We could do, we could oh, put on a, a, a thing. Do yes, that. we could put on a, what's called a glaze. And so we'll lighten our wash down very much and glaze it over. And it'll tint it. It'll tint oh. it down a little bit. You got to tint it. You got to tint it. Um, so I'm kind of awkwardly reaching over because our um, palette is in the middle here. Eventually, I'm going to get Mikey. If, if we want this whole thing to continue, I'm going to get Mikey his own wet palette so that we can. So Nick has a wet palette, which he's explained on his other streams before, but basically it's this plastic bin with a sponge in it and you put some parchment paper down so that it only, it lets just enough water through the parchment paper that sort of keeps your, your palette wet so mm -hmm. that your paint doesn't dry out. Yeah, because your paint, it's slowly, very, very slowly. I'm just going to rehydrate. Yeah, so this is a palette. So this is a, this is our wet palette. So it's a sponge which has some clear parchment paper on it. And the the parchment paper is lending through a little bit of liquid, which is then putting a teeny bit of water into the paint and the entire time cool. this, this and keeps it from drying out. And you can keep keeps it working perfect. It does. It actually it's actually it seems to be nice that my parchment paper I might switch over. Um, Costco baby. And so uh, yeah, Those and so big ups on the wet palettes. Yeah, yeah the, wet palettes are the best, and it, you can keep your paint wet for like weeks as long as you cover That's it. That's crazy. Yeah, and so yeah. it's really, really cool. That's super cool. All right, Mikey, we're going to grab a, a brush. Okay, um, what would you recommend? Are we, because we're doing kind of, I mean, yeah, no, it's we don't pretty, to be super careful, we are kind of doing fine work because they got these little spindly arms. I'm all about. And then their face and then their chest. So how big or small of a brush do you think I ought to use? Go ahead and use this one. Oh, man. Okay, so this guy kind of does. So basically, yeah. you can also, one of the reasons why I like layer. having a wet palette is because you can, uh, the sponge is wet, so you can actually kind of wet your brush like that. You're it's like doing kind of a twist. Yeah, so you always want to twist to it because then nice it gives your point. it gives your brush a nice uh, fine point. All these brushes Boing. are getting kind of crappy and old, but that's okay. Um, okay, so Mike. So way of life. also, I want to uh, identify. Whoops. Let's uh, make sure we identify all the spots of bone so we know we need to do. So obviously, there's his, his torso here. 
got a little necklace on his face, his arms, obviously. Well, those arms are, like, not bone arms at all, but whatever. His arms are just, like, normal arms. We could do normal. Nah. <laughs> he's got... So he's got some skulls. Some skulls on his little on pants. On his pants. Also, his left, or I guess his right, because this is the Oh, his is. foot's exposed His down foot's here. exposed down here. So I think that's all the bone we have to do. We can always go back and touch it up if we need to. Interesting. Um, okay. So we're going to get some paint. Again, oh, when you're scary. getting paint, you're going to roll it through. And then we're just going to start. And you can kind of start wherever you want, but I'm going to make sure I'm on camera here. FYI, the mobile notification day said, free side chat with some other dude. I don't know. Yeah, it's, uh, we, we're able usually to update the, the, um, name on it. But for some reason, Twitch just changed their whole interface. And now we can't get to the thing that Gen Con allowed us to get to, to change the, the thing ourselves. And so we had to, we had to call in an emergency, uh, to Gen Con and be like, hey, can you go change the stream name? We can't do it anymore. <laughs> so we, it was changed uh, right after we started because we were we were wanted to start oh, on time. So do this on camera. Heart but heart hello, Diz, my Mikey, that'd be nice. Heart so now, so we're just kind of painted in. Diz, how you doing? By the way, and if anyone has any questions or any comments or whatever, this is a very chill uh, stream. If not, it'll be kind of nice. Usually, when I'm painting mini streams and no one's talking to me, uh, I just sit there and paint alone, which is honestly totally fine. I don't mind it because I'm listening to music and stuff. But uh, it doesn't make for the greatest content, and so it'll be nice, because I can always just talk to you. <laughs> I know. As long as it's not going to ruin your vibe, your meditative vibe, man. Nah, you're good. So your Meditative vibe. For man. this, Mikey, one, there's a bit of the pelvis sticking up right here. It looks, like, Or is that the pants? Uh, it looks like a bit of a... Uh, I don't know. Maybe on the side. Let's say this side right here, Mikey, this left, left side. Let's, side just, let's just guess that this is pelvis. I don't just really know. It's kind of hard to tell, either. honestly. Um... And so, uh, don't really worry about hitting other stuff, Mikey. That's why we're choosing the light color to begin oh, with. Oh, whoopsie. Oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, wow. Um, back lunch with eating lunch and watching the Brothers Murph paint minis. Life is good. Hi, everyone. What's up, Hello. Mac Bacon? How you doing? Life is good, indeed. How are you? Um. It's going to splash this all up in there. Yeah, pretty much. Um. So, yeah. So, this is super cool. Uh, not super accurate, guys. It's okay. You'll get better. You get better at painting quicker and such. Um, so yeah, so this is from Roman Bones. There's a, a cool when you're not game. This game is like a MOBA style game where you are, uh, you have your heroes, kind of like, you know, League of Legends. You have your heroes and then you have like your normal troops who are just like, mah, 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 uh, walking forward. Sort of ever marching forward. To, ever marching forward. To their likely demise. Yeah. And uh, these guys are your uh, troops that, again, that are just marching forward forever and they never stop okay, there's some very simple ai on them they just do their thing yep. there's no real choices to make with them uh although you get to choose what lane they sort of go into so there's a bit of choice there there definitely is once they're out and about they just kind of do their thing sorry i'm trying to trying to see I'm kind of literal is this score right here you think i think so let's go for it that's really what minis, especially like really detailed minis, it's honestly very difficult to tell what some stuff is. Well, yeah, you're putting all this detail on something that's rather small. Yeah, it's like, and, and honestly, uh, cool when you're not, their minis are incredibly detailed, but it's like, yeah, it's like, man, it could be pretty difficult to to see what's up. Now, I have a question. Yeah, but... Is there such a thing as, because uh, you usually, I know you're saying... Um, in a few minutes, Mike, go and wash out your brush just so your, your paint isn't drying in your brush. Uh, in your, in our PAX Unplugged, um, unmatched mini painting class, you're talking about, you know, you kind of lick, you, you thin out your paint with water. Yes. Oftentimes. Now with the wet palette, is that something that you don't have to do that as much? No, you still need to because the... It seems like we thin this down pretty significantly. Yeah, I thin my paints down a lot. I mean, probably more than I really need to. Um, but I really, really thin my paints down. Like, a really a lot. Um, and so... You still need to because, yeah, eventually the wa the water from the palette will seep in, but it won't do it right away. It takes a long time, which is kind of the point, that it seeps in little bits at a time. So right. you still need to thin it down um, because otherwise you're just painting with normal paint because it'll take, you know, you know, it seeps in the teeniest bit, which is, again, kind of the point. But uh, if you don't uh, do it right off the bat, 
um, you're, you'll just be painting with normal paint, which is fine, but like it just can obscure details and it's just not the best to work with. Okay. Uh, it doesn't flow off your brush very well. But uh, yeah, so thin your paints down and if you're thinking, oh man, if I thin this thin down enough, thin it down, down more. That's generally my whole thing is like thin it down as much, I mean, like I thin it down to the point where it's, it's damn near like a wash and that's honestly too much. And what's the reason for that? What's the reasoning for? Yeah, you thin it down more than most. Like, well, I, I just what I do you just, like about it when it's thinner. Like it's that? not so much that I like it; I just do it accidentally. Oh, okay. And I just don't feel like I could then add more paint to it to thicken it back up. But I just get lazy. And I'm like, ah, I'll just do like two coats instead. Okay. Um, which is weird because that's not the lazy way to do it. The lazy way would just be add more paint. <laughs> but, uh, but I also don't mind because the more thin layers you do the better it's going to look because you'll have a nice even like yet yeah, like when we were doing the unmatched mini because we were only doing one layer uh it was a bit splotchy which was fine right. when you're putting like a, a wash over it's not nearly as big a deal but it was a bit splotchy um and so uh <laughs> thank you Diz, for the biddies and Yo. nightbot nightbot timed him out of course because nightbot is that guy um, can't have enough. Can't have any fun here, folks. Um, thank you, Diz. Deb Pony. Yeah, Diz comes back in. All right, I love it. Thank you, Diz. You're the best. Uh, what was I just saying? Oh, so uh, when you when you do multiple thin layers, you'll have a very even coat, really, really even. Because the first layer two will be splotchy, but as you add like two more, you'll do uh, it'll you'll even everything out. Uh, Quicksand asked, what do you use when you're attaching the minis to a base? So Mikey has a fancy like... Citadel uh, mini holder ooh, that has ooh, these ooh. little jaws that holds minis. It's very, very cool. I actually like, like all sorts of different shapes. I stuff. had two of them. I must have left the other one at home. Um, like, yeah, but, yeah. A circular guy can go in here. Yep, exactly. Bang. Exactly. Can we got a little Gandalf. Up. Look at this Gandalf. You guys don't think so, it's dope? Look at that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I really like it. It does help a lot being able to hold something rather than trying to hold the base, like a base so like What do you this. do, Nick? you do kind of a DIY thing, which seems to work pretty good. Yeah, the only reason I have those is because last year at Gen Con, not this year, but someone just like handed those to us. They handed us two yeah. of them. And so I was kind of like, ah, whatever. And then I started using so them. You're going like, to oh, need these so really nice. on Gen Con's Twitch channel. Uh, go ahead and uh, clean your brush off, Mike. Just make sure it's not getting dry in there. Um... Mrs. Skull said, popping in and to say hello, my dear. Well, cool. Thank you, Mrs. Skull. <laughs> um, and so in terms of this one, I just use an empty paint pot. This is a, a shade that I use enough of that's gone. And this is just, its I think it's called white tack or sticky tack. You can get it at like a Target or Walmart anywhere. It's just, it's just. It's a little hobby sticky uh, tack. Or it's like, it's yeah. just sticky tack. Oh, I meant when you're making fancy bases to hold my mini, I'm using medication bottles. Exactly. That's exactly. Something you can just hold on to, so you're not trying to, like, hold on to the base, and you certainly don't want to hold on to the mini, because if you painted that part, your your skin is just going to rub it away. Right. Uh, Nightbot's going to be sassy, or is it Daybot during the day? That's a question right there. Is it Daybot? Daybot. Oh. oh. Um, I meant when you're making fancy uh, bases. So what was the question originally? I think uh, you were basing, doing basing. What do you use when you're attaching minis to a base? Okay, I see. So when I'm like done with a fancy base, is that what you mean? Yeah. And then how do you how do you make how do you make a mini stick to a, a thing that you have based? You, so what I how do, you do base the minis? and what most people uh, seemingly do is uh, you can get a little hand drill, little hand drill, little my What? How we do it? How we do it? Hey, you look good. You're looking good. Actually, it's actually easier for me to look up there than looking there. That looks really good, Mikey. I think so. See, we're going good. See, Mikey's doing great. Um, so you can get a little hand drill. You get these very, very small little bits. Does it make tiny little squeak sounds? It does not. I wish. It's actually a palm drill. So it sits in your palm. What? You put the butt end against your palm. It's like a little, it looks like a little bullet. Put a bunny against your palm, and then you can turn it, and the back in here swings. So basically what I'll do is I will cut them off their bases, and then you take the drill and you drill into their feet what? you drill into their feet and then you insert a paper clip or something small kind of metal like that and you super glue it into their feet and then what you do is whatever your base is you do the same thing you drill a hole into the base yeah. and then super glue it and then you <clears throat> pin them to the base wow because if you super glue them just to the base they'll probably stay but that way they're pinned they the into the base and they won't move so yeah you get a little pin drill you can find them at most hobby stores uh, you might be able to find it at like a Michaels. I don't entirely know. I got mine at a at a at a board game um, store, 
Uh, so yeah, so it's just you're just pinning it, and so you pin uh, it. you've got to pin it, Got and especially on like Rip. if you there you go. These minis, like minis and board games, for the most part, come already on bases. But if you're doing any kind of like Warhammer or any kind of any other mini type situation, they will come with a base, but they are not coming on that base, which means you are going to have to attach it in some way. Now, again, if you're just painting it and not really doing much to the base, you can just super glue it on and it won't be a big deal. Did you say that you're all. all about the base? I am all about the base. I love making mini bases. It is by far my favorite part of the mini painting hobby uh, by far. As I often say, I paint minis so I can put them on cool bases. And I've just started down on my um, mini my mini base. You're just you're at the beginning of a great noble time. Dude, yeah, it's already. I'm like, we tend to get, we tend to, we have a aunt and uncle who give us money to like Amazon every year for Christmas. And so every year it's like, it's nice because like a lot of times when we get money for like Christmas or birthday, it tends to go towards bills because we're super poor. So, the Amazon money is nice because we like literally can't spend it on anything other than something on Amazon. So we're kind of forced to buy something for ourselves because Mike and I are very bad at treating ourselves. And so, so. Um, so this year, I think I'm going to get some more basing stuff. Nice. How are we doing over there, Mikey? Why do they have human know. arms? This bothers me. They're just like really skinny arms. Um, I, I, oh, I have a split. I forgot a split. You just, oh, you, you're, you're ahead of me. Yeah, it's fit. Yeah, but that makes me worried that I'm not doing this. No, nah, this is a bit. Again, I'm taking probably too long. Uh, let me actually speed up a little bit. Take your time, man. We got till 11. But yeah, so these streams uh, will be two hours. And again, if you like them, please let Gen Con know because we would love to start doing this more often. You We're going to hashtag need more Murphs or just. You know, <laughs> just in general, need that was super fun. Um, we are going to be back here doing this on Friday. We're doing a couple of kind of trial run streams. Um, so we'll be back here on Friday and then back here also on next Wednesday doing the same, uh, same thing. Um, Mystic Solo asked, uh, what are some good minis to practice on? Are there any good starter kits? Starter kits of minis? I would just buy, uh, go to your local game store. Uh, and there's usually a bunch of like Reaper Bones minis. They are not like the best minis, but they're cheap. They're super cheap. Paint on like cheap, crappy minis. Uh, I don't know of any like mini Cut your teeth kits. On. Yeah, just just screw up a lot. You know, that's what you got to do. But don't screw up on minis you really care about. Um, I don't know of any like mini kits. If you're looking for a good mini painting, mini like paint starter kit get the Vallejo one the Vallejo one is by far the best um in terms of like what they give you uh the the sheer amount of stuff you get in it and on top of that Vallejo is uh great paints I like Citadel paints the most that's which what is, we're using today that's what we're using today so these are these are games workshop uh Citadel paints these are my favorite kind of paints but in terms of just like a mini painting set the Vallejo one is is kind of hard to beat. It's it's very good. Uh, you get a ton of it, and it's not that I think it's like thirty bucks. But in terms of like minis, I would just get cheap minis. Go get cheap bones minis. Get some cool looking ones, you know, and just paint them. If you're looking for a good board game to start on, I would say start on something like Zombie Side. That's what I started on. Um, I'm more concerned about the skull crotches than the human arms. Yeah, this guy's got them just right right in the front, right in the front. Um. What, are, what did you paint this one as a skull right here? On the left? On the right. Or the le his left. Yeah, this one okay. down here, sort of. It's not... Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of ill-defined, but that's fine. Because he crushed that dude's face in. That's yeah. Why. Um, in, so in terms of like, like a game that's a really good game to start with, I would say something like Zombie Side, Something that's got a ton of minis, and the minis themselves don't need to look that great. Um, oh, I'm, Dizzy gave us videos on our channel. Thank you, Dan. Oh, hey. I'm sorry. Our sound, for some reason, doesn't go through our TV. Uh, we're switching Woo! our sound too much, but thank you, Bebo. I appreciate you. Um, All right. I think I'm done with the bones. Okay, Mike. Know. We're done with the bones. Oh, works. Maybe I'll need some touch-ups later. Let's go ahead. And so his pants are just, he's got really billowy pants. Very big billowy pantaloons. So, so basically his whole... And his boots come up pretty darn high. They do. It's so basically, nice from what I can tell, one there's a he has a belt on a big one of those big fat pirate belts. So you got a big fat pirate belt. We'll paint that like brown or black. And then we got these big billowy pants that are all over. These are all big billowy pants. Yeah. Yeah. Why does he have, he has cross skulls? It's very confusing. Um, 
And then, it's double bed, right? then it's big boots. So what color do you want to paint your pants? Granted, you do not need to paint your pants the same color as I paint my pants. Mm, interesting. Now, the I probably should have... Uh, let me see if I can grab them. Uh, we have painted some Bone Devils before. At least I have. Oh, yeah. So, should have so it, at least it's in the it's, same world. It's up to you. Yeah. So do you, it's, it's up to you kind of if you want to keep the color scheme going. Let's see. Or... Uh, so I did, I, I kind of followed what you were talking about with that kind of like eerie green blue. Yeah, that's the thing with, you know, like, I like that look. Because we'd have these out kind of for reference. I don't have the copy, of course. But. So yeah, so we've done, this is what we've done. Again, they do not need to match this at all. I'm actually all for not matching them. But that is what we've done so far with the Bone Devils, which is that kind of, he gave him a big purple coat, and where's the other one? And then this one, kind of like a, that dead kind of, it's it's Green a haunted, little yeah. lighter on, on in real life, but yeah, that kind of haunted, kind of green, ethereal, uh, blue. I kind of like the pants green. are brown, but they're almost like, almost to burnt orange or something. Yeah, they're probably something like this, this like Doom Bowl brown. It's kind of like a reddish brown. Yeah, something like that might be sweet for his little pants. All those boots. We could make black boots, I guess. We could make black boots. Um, I'd go for that or something. Kind of like I would pirates. say all their boots are probably black because pirates tend to wear black boots. Yeah. I'd go like that or come something with some orange in it. But on the way to brown. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. So, like a burnt umber, burnt orange, you said, right? Yeah, an umber is exactly what I was thinking. Um, uh, well, let's experiment a bit, Mikey. Let's try it. I watched so many ads last night, so I got them bits. Got them bitties. Uh, let's on see. For just being the ad man. Let's see what we can do. Know. Um, sorry, sorry, Mad Men. Mrs. Skull, sorry, what I was talking about earlier before we decided we were ready to move on was, um, I'd say something like Zombie Side. Something with a lot of minis, a good mini game to start on. Something with a lot of minis that you can then uh, mess up on. And zombie minis are perfect because zombies are dead. Which means if they look weird and kind of dirty and gross, they're zombies. They're zombies. Who cares? And you can really kind of hone your craft on that. That's what I did. I painted two full games of zombie side. No, three because well, two and a half because I did the base game, I did the prison outbreak, yeah. and Toxic City Mall. Yeah, that alone was probably like 150 minis. Yeah, or then so. you did all of War of the Ring. Then all of War of the Ring, which is over 200 minis. The armies. So like, yeah, you've you've <laughs> you you definitely. Uh, Cut my teeth. Cut your teeth. Earn your stripes. Yeah, exactly. On kind of those army-ish. Nice thing about zombie size, yeah, there's like 8, 10, 12, 15, whatever of the same thing. So you can kind of like try mess around with just that same thing. Like, I'm going to try this. Then on the second one, I'm going to try this now. and that, or, or do batch painting for the first time. You know, like, there's a lot to uh, explore with those kinds of things because you have so many of the same thing. And like, what Nick would do is he would Give like... Give me that one of those oranges up there. Maybe. Do you care which? Uh, oh, not neon. Yeah, this one. This one's one. Um, <clears throat> what's it called? Um, like what Nick did with Zombie Side is he painted all of the zombies first before doing any of the heroes. He ultimately ever did the heroes thing for Black Plague, but you're like, no, no, no. I want to like, I want to get good with the stuff that's less important before doing like your so you, like the heroes. Yeah, something like that's okay, cool. cool. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so now I need to mix more of this. You know, some bright orangish, burnt orange pants. Oh, man. Burnt orange pants, I like. Pantaloons, pantaloons. Tesco says, "Wait, you can watch ads to get bits. You can. Yeah, you can. You can go uh, to buy bits. You can say watch an ad to get a teeny amount of bits. Yeah, um, and those bits count just the same as everything else. Man. They sure do, man. And I think if I'm not mistaken, this just mutes it and just clicks it over on the side, lets it do its thing, which is awesome. Which is not a bad way to go about. So you're not like suffering through watching all right. Toyota ads. All so day. now I've uh, mixed our color here. It's going to be an interesting one to highlight. I'm excited. Yeah. So the cool, cool thing about highlighting these ones is like this, the highlights on this are pretty rough, but I actually don't mind that because they're like underwater demon people. And so like it actually <laughs> works out pretty well. Excuse me. All right. So that also goes to show you don't need to have a billion different colors. You know what's nice, Mike? That. Who cares? Bam. Put a, we took our game top and put uh, a tablecloth down so that we can um, go to Tablecloth LLC for more, <laughs> for more information. Um, all right, Mikey, go ahead and start in on the Poon to Loons. Oh, man. So, question. Yeah, boo. Around the front, the little the little skull satchel thing. Yeah. 
How so, much of that? Do you think we should do pants all the way up till around the skulls? Yeah. I mean, the back side is very clearly pant, but the front side's... It's kind of weird. I would say... Like, he's got like a little like pocket watch thing here. There's a lot a of like... watch? Like, look at that. There's like stuff hanging. And then like here on the right side, it looks like this is almost like something that's another utility belt. Something, something. This might be a bit of belt. This little flat part right here. Yeah. This part right here looks... Like, don't you see like a watch like on a little chain? Yeah, I something think... like that. I mean, it's probably can't see it from here. There's something right there. Oh gosh, there is right. Oh yeah, there's a medallion right there. Something, yeah. Yeah, I'd say try to avoid I'm that. The back then side, the back side's clear. Huh? No, you're right. There's like a little chain that's right here, and yeah. then a little medallion that's like on a little necklace. So that'll yeah. we'll make gold. I think the rest of it is just pants, though. Mystic Skull says, thank you for the suggestion. Seems intimidating, but I'm tempted. I want something relaxing, creative. Do you have to work? I mean, Nick does a really good job of, uh, scooch to the right of hair, Nick. Sorry, I'm thinking about Of, um, helping remove the intimidation. Like, I, it's probably fair to say, Nick, you were intimidated at the start. I'm still intimidated. Still intimidated, but you know what? You also realize, like, you can't, you can't fail. Like, it's art. You can't fail. It's always it's gonna expression. look better than a gray mini. Yes. Always. Which I appreciate that you say, because it's true. It's just like, you're going to have something that's like way cooler looking than it comes in the box. Yeah. So you've already won by trying it. And like, everything you do is an experience. And you might do something that doesn't come out the way you want, but you learn something about how to do in the future. And so it's like starting starting simple. And like, the fact that you want something that's kind of creative and relaxing. It's like, okay, go, in it, go into it with only that purpose. You're like, I want this to be creative and relaxing. So don't stress the results. Enjoy the process, make it a journey based thing, not a destination based thing. And you're probably going to succeed in your goal. Yeah. If you're not having fun, stop doing it. And Mikey, we can do this literally, but there's a little there's a little gap right here. There's a little bit of knee sticking through, I think. What? Where? It'll be right. It's like that, that little, tiny little, little dot? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a little bit of knee. Dang. There's little details, baby. Um, yeah, so, uh, everything Mike said, uh, uh, Miss Skull, at everyone's side. And by the way, if you all enjoy this, again, make sure to tell Gen Con, make sure to give Gen Con a follow. They're trying to do more kind of cool stuff, like mini painting, and they have really great talk shows, and then we're on on Monday nights, which is the least good show, obviously. Um, and so, um, so the discussion topic for the today, and again, this will kind of be how it is, it's very casual and stuff, but, um. Oops, I am not painting on screen, Nick. Thank you. Um, for today is going to be uh, our, uh, probably a little bit more my, uh, history with mini paintings. So, yeah, uh, I kind of touched on it a little bit. So, like, what, 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 what made you first want to paint a mini? Like, what, was there any, like, person you watched? Like, obviously you're an artist, so I imagine that played into the desire, but, like, how did you how did you get here, man? Actually, we can accredit mini painting to our careers, Mikey. Um So you're just here for the money. Yes, that's that's what exactly what it is. Oh, I um I see how it is. I see how it is. I wish you would. Um No, and it's the reason for that is is because Mike and I were very casual gamers, had uh pandemic had um had Catan and that was literally it for years and that was it that's all we ever played was those two things uh and loved them but that was it we didn't we weren't into the, the hobby really uh very much at all we didn't know how much hobby there was that that really is the the truth like we had no idea how much hobby there actually is um but then uh tall david who's my roommate told me about a game that he saw he's like hey man i, I know you guys like games i saw this game it's called zombie side it is this giant, like, cooperative, you know, like, like there's a like, cooperative, like, pandemic, you know? It's, like, this giant, like, mini game where you're, like, have all these zombies and you're, like, trying to survive and do all these missions. And to someone who had never played hobby board games before, this was the craziest thing I'd ever heard of or seen or anything like that. I was just like, what are you talking about? And then we looked it up. And I think with, like, probably with our, like, Amazon money, that year we ended up getting it. And ended up playing the butt end out of it and loved it, loved it, loved it. Because it's so good. Because it's so cool. And so with this game, with all these minis that we were just obsessed with and playing like all the time, 
I then was just like, you know what? Like, I like to do art. I like to, I like to draw and stuff like that. Like, I would love to paint these minis. And so I started collecting. Were you paint. aware that mini painting was a thing? Yeah, yeah. Not, not to the degree that it is. I mean, if you look at like, like I was telling you yesterday when I was looking at like mini painting, I'm like, why am I looking at better mini painting than me? I'm just getting depressed and I'm not good. It's like. <laughs> And I'm a, I'm a good mini painter, but you look at, like, pros, and you're like, holy crap. Like, it's just incredible, the the stuff that people can do. But I knew, I didn't know it was as crazy and amazing as it is, but I knew of it. I was aware of it. Gotcha. So I started doing what pretty much everyone does when they want to learn something new. I started looking up YouTube tutorials. And I was specifically trying to look up YouTube tutorials for zombies. Like, trying to find zombies right. one. And I ended up coming across uh, this uh, woman named Girl Painting is her channel on YouTube. And she still does stuff on YouTube. I still watch her occasionally. And she had a zombie painting tutorial. Or, or rather, she had a video of her painting a zombie. Now, this wasn't... It was just a random zombie. It was a GW zombie. So it was a, it was a Games Workshop zombie. Okay. Now, I watched this one start to finish and was like... Cool. This wasn't helpful at all because one, it wasn't a zombie side mini. Two, it was way too intense. Like it was, oh, she, yeah. she she paints stuff really well. She like, you know, base coats it, washed it, does a ton of highlights. She was like going into like what color you should make, like the muscles that are like exposed and like. Quick sand drops some bits, by the way. Dab on it. Quick, quick sand. sandy, thank you. Dab on it. Dab on it. Dab on it. I don't know why I think he's working, but thank you yeah, for the no biddies. Worries. Appreciate it. I uh, appreciate y'all being here. There's a couple of guys. Those like, alerts not at the top. Is that what's going on? Uh, no, it is. It's just we don't have any sounds. We're not hearing it. Oh, weird. Yeah. So, we, it's there. We're just not hearing it. Sorry, Sorry. about that, folks. Uh, and thank you all for being here. This is this is cool. We got some good viewers. We want to do one in the morning. One, so people can watch the work, too. Also, so people like in Europe and stuff or like across the world can watch us because we kind of stream specifically for North American times, which is like, you know. It's the time that we live in, to be fair. Yeah, to be fair, it's most convenient for us. <laughs> um. Okay, so now we got at least for me. Have you, did you kind of do, I left that little bit on the side here. This little flappy flap? This little tiny flap. Yeah, that, we're, we're going to say that's part of the belt. I left this like tiny dot, which I imagine is what to make our bones out of this section. One thing that's kind of cool is you can just, just decide to do something. Like this little flap, I don't know if that's part of the belt. But we're going to make it part of the belt. Yeah, you're right, right? You're like, oh, it is now. All right, so one thing you need to do, Mikey, this little flap right here, this is pants. Because this is going up over the belt and hanging over, which means it's part of the pants. Because oh. these are pants. This is probably cloth that they have belted to their legs. Which is why this is so loose and hangy. Interesting. So you said above this little patch down here is this right here you're talking about? That's yes, pants? that is pants. Total pants, man. What's this dance dude? His pants. His absolute pants. Pants, 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 pants. And then Mikey. Oh, no, I lied. I thought, we do, I thought we were about to do some precision stuff. I lied, though. We're not. This all has felt incredibly precise. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Um. So as I said, so I watched uh, Girl Painting, and I watched her do this zombie, and it was instantly just like, this wasn't helpful at all, but this is really cool. So I started watching her like obsessively. I was watching like her paint, just like all sorts of stuff, just like it's anything and everything. Yeah, just like anything and everything. I was watching all of it because she's just kind of funny and and she seems really cool and stuff. And, and <coughs> I would just paint, watch her paint because I just had never seen someone. I knew many painters, but I'd never seen someone paint minis, especially like. And like don't get me wrong, she's like not the greatest painter on the planet. She's very very good, but it's like even then, it's like I I never seen someone do like highlights and all. This, I was just blown away. And so I was just watching her all the time. It wasn't really helping my mini painting because right. I wasn't, it wasn't for what I was doing. Well, you're enjoying that part of the hobby. Uh, yeah. And then I found a gentleman named Sarastro. Sarastro is a mini painter who I still uh, religiously watch today. I, th I think he's the best, in terms of like teaching and, and giving tutorials on painting stuff, um, he's the best out there there's a lot of great mini painters that i watch he's also um, pretty big too right he's pretty big yeah i mean he's also he's not that he's really he's big in like the board gaming world he doesn't do he doesn't do like warhammer stuff he does like strictly board game stuff oh, okay. which i think limits his audience to see out but at the same time i don't do war games so i like the fact that he's just yeah. all it's more for you yeah 
Um, Quick says, I'm on vacation for the next four weeks, so yeah, you can catch all the paint streams. I oh, heck We're yeah. happy to have you for these streams. They're super fun so far. I'm loving this. Yeah. And Mystic Skull said, I love this. Thank you. Chill Bob Ross vibes. Good. That's exactly what we want. It's a nice, chill discussion. Well, we have a place where we can discuss. We're hanging topics. out. Like today, we're talking about Nick's kind of specific history. So, but the thing we want to do is have things where it's sort of about the chat kind of. We're going to talk about just different things about board games. Almost like a sort of a metagame minute vibe here. Yeah. Just sort of talk about things. Or Whatever eventually talk about. talk about donuts and pie like we tend to, we, we to usually do. Something like that. Uh, how long does it typically take to paint a mini? That is a, a large question. For something like this, yeah, what was the... like one of these minis start to finish is probably going to be about, with the rate we're going, probably two hours or so. Two, three hours. Depending on how much we highlight it. There is a mini that I'm working on right now that I'm working for Tall David. I've sunk at least 25 hours into. And I wow. just started the main dude. So... Like, I haven't even well, what done... what do you mean main dude? Just, like, multiple things? Well, it's like a dude, he's on top of this big dragon dog thing. I've painted oh. the whole dragon dog, which, to be fair, is the much bigger part of it. Right, right. But the main dude is the more important part of it. Dang. So, this is it's probably going to be at <sighs> minimum 35 hours. Uh, That's a pretty big... Yeah, doing, it's a big... I imagine a lot of cool stuff. Yes, and so... And then on top of that, I've already sunk five hours into the base. Uh, so... Uh, <laughs> So, it, it really depends. If you're just doing stuff like this, like batch painting, probably you'll get faster. If you're just starting out, probably a couple hours per mini is what I'd say. I also am not a good judge because I paint really slow. Especially if I'm on stream because I talk a lot and I'm doing this where I'm not painting. I'm just in here talking, which is dumb. I should be painting. Um, I don't know. But, uh, but, yes. So, these streams are going to be two hours. So, we will... We're not going to be painting to a super, super high level. We may throw in some higher level stuff, but mostly it's just so we're not painting like, like we don't want to spend like 10 streams on these eight dudes. Like that, that would not be that interesting, you know? So we what might do is might paint like one or two of these dudes and paint the rest like off stream or something like that. Something like that. Okay, Mikey, we're cloaking, baby. Cloaking it up. It's All cloaked right. up. Well, I called the pants. What do you call for the cloaks? So now here's the thing. With, with I think, all of the minis I've done for Roman Bones, I've done it one way, where I've done it where, like, these two dudes, oh, where's the other dude, uh, are basically exactly the same. The things I changed is I changed Your their sash, sash their coat, and then their headband, which is just the same color as their sash. But everything else is exactly the same. So for this, I say we do the same. The pants will all keep the same color, but let's do different cloaks and let's right. do different headbands. Let's have the cloak and the headband be the same color. And then everything else again will be so the same. Except for maybe, maybe we'll change up the squid. These will both be the same? Yeah. So I like to do that where it keeps them all different, but it means I can still batch paint them. And I do that so I can do it quickly. Sure. So what are you feeling, man? Oh. They don't have to follow this scheme. They can be totally different. Right. I don't know. Our chat, what do you think? For, yeah. the, for the cloaks, you, mean, you choose for us. What do you think bounce well off this orange? So we got a kind of a burnt orange, so I'd say not red, because it'll yeah. just kind of blend into the orange too much. I mean, I was personally thinking blue, just go opposite on the color wheel type. We got lots of blues, maybe. Type vibe. Or, Absolutely. You know, go but for it. Is that going to be Is that gonna be too crazy? No. Not at all. Something bright? I'm down for bright. Something bright? All right. Mine will just go for like kind of a pale blue. You can go for pale blue. Pale blue because it's going to darken up a bit with a wash. It will. And then we'll highlight it again. So we'll bring it back to pale. But okay. So this is this is our blue. Stick. So all my paints here. Know. These are kind of weird because this is usually over there. Oh, okay. And I usually actually have these two switched. But it doesn't matter. Basically, they're broken up by color groups. So you have like oranges okay. and reds, which then went into like these yellows. And then we have blues and then greens and then purples. And then here we have all of our tans and whites. It's basically skin tones and then metallics. Okay. Quicksand agrees blue. I mean, okay. so I'm thinking, I mean, this seems kind of groovy. You want to start with, was it Lothorn? Lothorn. Okay. Lothorn blue seems kind of rad, kind of a pale, pale blue. Okay. Could go a hair darker with uh, Hoth blue. Hoth blue. Hoth blue. I don't know. What do y'all think? I, I kind of dig the blue. Well, Hoth blue's a little lighter. This is lighter? Yeah. Really? Yeah, because it's got more gray in it, and it's going to it's gonna appear lighter. So Hoth blue would be the lighter of the two. Um, for me, oh, I'm still thinking this one. I don't know why. I think I'm gonna do kind of like a. I think I'm gonna do kind of a. a 
brownish yellow for mine. Love, I'm gonna do brownish yellow because I was gonna do like green, but we already had green and purple. And now, granted, we only have so many colors, so there's not there's only so much we can really do. And I don't want to make them like bright pink. That's just not doesn't flow well with what we've done so far. So I'm gonna do kind of this pale yellow here, cool. which again we'll we'll highlight up to like a much lighter yellow, so it won't be this color all the time. But um, all right, Mikey, so. Go ahead. So we're gonna get. So t by the way, up here, these are nice brushes. These are shitty brushes. Sorry, crap brush. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, these are not brushes. Don't touch these. <laughs> Those are for sculpting uh, bases. Uh, so, or rather, sculpting like putty. So these are not brushes, but anything up here. So I usually wait, choose wait, like. So you're talking about like the bigger these bigger ones up here. They don't touch these. No, no, no. Oh, just, just these black these? ones. These black ones. These aren't actually oh, brushes. They're not even like brushes. they have like silicone tips. Yeah, I just want to say, don't actually try it. So um, I usually grab like this like is a crappy brush. These are like crappy just brushes. Just for getting paint out. Just for getting paint out. Yes. Okay. And generally, when we get paint out, now we're not doing multiple colors, but I usually wash in between because you don't want to like. If I'm mixing this in a blue, I don't want to put the blue into the yellow and right. stuff like that. So bright pink is the best color. I agree. I agree. That. Don't get me wrong. And we may do some bright pink for some other ones. Like if we paint like Mazu's Dreadful Curse. Yeah. That stuff, there'll be a lot of pink and fuchsias in that. Because that is legitimately just their color scheme. So now I am curious if this is going to blend into the skin color too much. We're going to have to kind of see. I may have to change this color, fam. Um, so a little more water. A little more water. Really? Seems so much. Look at, uh, you can see the consistency of, of mine. See, I, see how it's like beating like that? Now mine's again probably a little too thin. That's fine. That's good. Yes. Yeah. So that's why I usually go boom. And you kind of want it to like suck it <coughs> a little bit. Thinner is better. Thinner is always better. With, I mean, with I hobby get... painters. Um, it keeps it thin. This is working out really well. These are perfect. These yeah, are how do y'all like the now. look? Are you digging The look it? is nice. Actually, we're I... thinking about getting, you know, once we get set up and stuff, having the Gen Con, like, make it Gen Conified a little more. Yeah, like, that's the whole. Like, maybe some boxes and you have some of the like, Gen Con grays and things and, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of uh, make it nice. But I think it's pretty cool. The split screen vibe seems to work out. Yeah. All right. So going back to where we were in the discussion, uh, so I started watching Serastro mostly because Serastro specifically had a zombie side painting series, oh, that's awesome. which to this day exactly. is still the best yeah. one for zombie side specifically. So definitely go watch that if you want to paint zombie side. And so I literally was like, okay, buy exactly what he has and start painting. And that's exactly what I did. Really? Uh, yep. So is he a Citadel painter guy? Uh, at that time, yes. Although he uses much more Vallejo now. He's not really like a, he's not like loyal to any one brand really, but he back then was using mostly Citadel paints. Okay. Um, and one thing you see like down here, my hands shake a lot if you don't know that. And so, um, I'm using my pinky down here to brace against my thumb so that I have more control of the brush. Whereas here, my hand is just loose and because I shake, it, it's difficult to uh, to get in these kind of tight spots. So I tend to brace my pinky like that, and then my hands are are dead still. And mostly because like we already painted our um, bones in here, and so I don't really want to hit them because then I have to go back with the bone color and um, redo them. And I don't really feel like doing that. Yeah, I don't so. know. That's a way. If you like now, granted, we have a wet palette here. So our paint is still wet, so we can pretty easily grab that paint color. That and is very nice. I've already had to do that once, and it was not a problem. Yeah, support. whereas before, my paint would have already dried out, and I would have had to mix more, and it is a nightmare. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah like you said, especially if you're mixing. Yes, because you'll never get the same color twice. Right. And ever, ever, ever will you get the same color twice. Um, so, yeah, so I started watching Serastro uh, again going back in uh started watching serastro's mini painting videos uh because they were specifically about zombie side not to mention he had zombie side and he had a whole series about zombie side toxic uh toxic city mall which oh, wow. i wanted to paint as well Ooh, i like that blue a lot mikey um good color. choice mike and chat with the blue we knew with the blue i think this yellow's gonna look nice too although it's gonna kind of blend in but i think it's gonna be okay um, so he had one for normal zombie side, which worked for normal zombie side and prison outbreak. And he had one specific for the toxic one. And I was planning on painting all three. Cause I think at that point we had all three. 
So I was just like, yes, this is perfect. This is my God. And so I started watching. <laughs> now, granted, back then, I think he had like, those were his only videos. So like, he didn't have a ton. Now he's got like a ton of videos. But um, so I started watching him and I was still watching girl painting, mostly just because I enjoyed watching her painting and she was painting to a, uh, now Sarastro is, because the thing about Sarastro, a lot of his stuff is for like the beginner. Although I think that's kind of arguable considering he takes stuff to kind of like crazy levels. But nonetheless, I think he's kind of gotten away from that a little bit. But nonetheless, his stuff is still very beginner friendly. Whereas girl painting, again, she was painting on a, a much higher level, <clears throat> which is what her channel was about anyway. So I was still watching girl painting just to watch her paint. And in the uh, suggested videos bar on the left, I kept, on the right rather, I kept seeing stuff for different board games because I was usually looking up stuff for like Zombie Side, which is a board game, obviously. So I kept seeing Rado from Rado Runs Through and I kept painted. seeing, uh, I kept seeing uh, the Dice Tower. And for whatever reason, <laughs> at first I was kind of like, screw this Dice Tower. I didn't ever watch them. I was just like, I'm not clicking on them. But I started clicking on Rado's videos <laughs> and I started watching Rado obsessively because he was talking about all these board games I'd never oh, heard so of. Oh, it's not that. Rado painting, just Rado's general stuff. Yeah, it's just, just board game suggestions. Oh, yeah. I was like, I didn't know Rado painted. No, no, no. I mean, he might. I don't know. Um, Interesting. But so then I started watching Rado's run-throughs of games. And then from watching a bunch of Rado, again, again, and again, and again, and again, and again, because they are the biggest board gamers on the planet, I started watching The Dice Tower. And once I hit The Dice Tower, that's when... The whole open and Alice just tumbled down and we've never come back. And the second I started watching the Dice Tower is when our board gaming hobby started, which now turned into a full blown career. So really mini painting is what got me into board games. That is crazy. And then I just bugged you until you got as into board games as me. <laughs> and then we uh now right now we're full circle painting on the biggest board game convention in the world, Twitch channel. Isn't that wild? Isn't that wild? So that's how I got into painting. Um, how are we doing? You're looking great, dude. You're crushing, dude. Crying. I was telling Mike, I was like, you could be a really good painter if you just did it more. You know? And that's kind of what this whole series is about. Doing it more. I want to learn. Because here's the thing. You can buy fancy brushes. You can buy fancy paints. You just got to paint, though. You got to do it. You got to put in the time, man. It's the only way to get better. You just got to paint. Um, Nothing can uh, replace technique. Yeah, and technique can overcome a lot. Um, so once we got uh, Zombie Side, then <coughs> I spent many, many months, probably actually probably over a year painting that because again I don't paint very quickly and I wasn't painting all the time. Um, and then by that point we were like full in on the hobby. We had a bunch of different games. So then we had War of the Ring, which is a giant cool um, Lord of the Rings game. And I was like, well, Lord of the Rings, of the Rings is my favorite thing on the planet. i got to paint this. So then I spent like another year or two painting that because there was like 250 minis in that game. So I painted that. And then I was kind of full board. And then I kind of took a break for like a decent while. I would paint here and there. But I didn't really you paint did much. Kind of, uh, yeah. I painted a little bit of Rum and Bones. Painted a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But like it was pretty... It was pretty slow. It also kind of coincided with the time that you artistically were a little burnt out. Yes, I was very burnt out artistically for a while. I mean, for a while. And then kind of honestly, as our... So is headbands going to be the same as our cloak? Yeah, or you can change if you want to, but I'm going to make mine the same. Sorry, continue. Um. Yeah, and so I, I started... I don't know when I, I, I specifically started like paint again often but uh i kind of got back artistically in the groove and I, and I started painting again and then i uh last year moved in with my now roommate tall david and tall david um has a bunch of 40k stuff and has a bunch of uh board games that have minis but he doesn't like to paint too much because he is unfortunately colorblind and it's, it's honestly just difficult for him because it's hard for him to tell colors bar, you know? And so he basically was like, Hey man, like I'll give you cheap rent if you paint my minis and stuff. And especially cause he plays D and D. So he has all these like campaigns. He wants all these minis for like, he, he's the kind of dude who will like back a game on Kickstarter 
because it looks cool, but also just because he wants the minis. And so, so I was like, yeah, man. So I started uh, painting minis for him. And that kind of, in the last, you know, nine months or so, I've kind of gotten super into the mini painting to the point where I, uh, I haven't done normal art much at all this year. And I think it's because of my artistic uh, focus has been in mini painting, which is fine. You know, it's like, as long as I'm being creative, I'm okay with it, you know. This is very creative. I mean, there's yeah. no doubt about that. You know? so this has kind of been my artistic focus. So that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of my uh, history in the end is like, it kind of started off slow like most people. And now I'm kind of like full into where I'm spending, you know, I've painted, at this point I've painted um, 30 Stormcast Eternals for Tall David. Um, and uh Yeah. And and so I painted a bunch of those, still painting more, and yeah, I've just been been super into painting. Painting on stream has helped. I really enjoy painting on stream because it, it keeps me doing it, and I just enjoy doing it because I enjoy just talking to people and stuff like that. Um, well, this is incredibly fun, and thank you all for being here this morning, by the way. Yeah, we really, really appreciate it. Please uh, keep fun. showing up if you're enjoying it. We are having a heck of a time. It's very, very nice, and you know, yeah. You just trying my dang best over here. Yeah, I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my results. Yeah, I got the cloak over here. It's good. It, it didn't. It didn't blend in. I'm not the cleanest painter, but I, I'll take it. That's fine, man. So I actually did a pretty good job at not hitting much either. So that's good. Quick sense says I do like the uh, idea of doing different uh, kinds of minis. You know, uh, very color palettes explore different challenges for different kinds of minis. Yeah, yeah I mean. Yeah. Diversify. Well, and that's one thing, like, for me, that's kind of been an interesting challenge is I'm painting Stormcast Eternals, which are, like, literally head-to-toe gold armor. So it's kind of like I've painted head-to-toe gold armor, like, 30 times now. And I'm kind of like, okay, what can I do that's different? Now, I can't change them too much because David has a specific way they want to look, so there's not really too much I can do. But just trying to, like, just – it's not even so much about changing it as it is just, like, like trying to proactively work on getting better at certain things – Sure. With because I'm like, well, I can't really change the way they look, and they're still mostly gonna be this gold. So I'm like, yeah. okay. So like for this la last one I did, I'm doing this big dragon thingy, and I was just like, okay. The it, it got it, it's got this big like front plate because he's kind of like ah like that. He's got this big front plate. It's like the lion. They're all about lions and stuff. So it's like this big lion. And so usually what I do is I will paint uh, a retru retributor gold, which is kind of this dark gold color. And then I'll shade it with a brown wash. And that'll then pull into the recesses, which will then darken it down. So then, and then I'll come back and highlight up. And so what I did instead, I was like, well, let me try and like, I'm not, on this mini that I'm doing right now, I was like, I'm not going to use any washes. Oh, wow. I haven't used any washes at all. So what I've been doing instead is instead of painting gold and doing a wash on it, I painted it, uh, I painted it slightly lighter than this, but this is a uh, Rhinox Hide. It's a very dark brown. So I painted it dark brown and then... That then is over the whole thing, but essentially then I highlighted it, but I left the dark brown in the recesses, which is essentially what a wash would have done anyway. Right. Interesting. And I actually really like the look of it huh. that way. So I was like, okay, well, let me try something different. Let me try a different way of highlighting instead of like base coat, wash, highlight, which is the general way I do things. I was like, let me let me have it where I put down a base coat, be more conscious about the ch colors I'm choosing, and then highlight from there yeah. rather than just wash it. Because when you wash it, especially... Um, it's buffering quite a bit. Uh, it's weird. It's not buffering on our end. It'll alert us if it does. That's very odd. Sorry about that. Um, oh, yeah. It's buffering over here, too. That's weird. weird. It must be... Again, it's not buffering on our end, so... Why does Twitch hate us? I don't know. Twitch hates us. So, um, so that's what I'm trying to do. It's like, do different minis, but even if you're having to do something similar, try something new. Try something different. All right, Mikey. Uh, it's belt time, baby. Do, 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 belt, belt. Because we basically belt, have belt... belt, belt, belt. We have boots and sword, and then we're done with the base coat. Cool. We're doing pretty good. We're only an hour in, too. Not bad. Our pace so is we're, good. we're moving, you know. So the belt, Mikey, let's go ahead and just treat it. You want a black belt or a brown belt? I think black belt, black boots. Black belt, black boots. I love it. So we're going to use Abaddon Black, which is here. Um, so one thing that's nice about Citadel paints is they are uh, satin paints. So there's like three different kinds of paints. There's like matte paints, which have no shininess at all. There's like gloss paints. Yeah. Right back. 
paints. There are uh, gloss paints, which are very glossy and shiny, and then there are satin paints, which are kind of the middle. Uh, Citadel's paints are satin, uh, and the reason why that's nice, I actually don't care, honestly, about the, the thing, because I use a matte varnish on the end anyway, but because the black is satin, it, it looks darker than like a matte black. It just... The, sh the bit of shininess makes it look darker and so it gives you a darker black so like, I know people that I watch who don't paint with Citadel paints but they use this black because it looks more black if that makes any sense at all yeah no, so this we're gonna go around. so Mike we're gonna boots it so now on this right foot I went up pretty high with the bone because it looks like there's a tear in the boot like kind of mid leg almost like it goes up a ways yeah so it comes down to I there don't, yeah it, yeah so it goes up to that tear yeah so yeah. this is I should put on here there's a little tear in the boot right there that's where the boot, tear in the boot. ends that the, in the boot tear in the boot has everyone uh, gotten back? Is it still buffering and stuff? I mean, obviously, if it is, I, I doubt you'll be able to hear on, us. Uh, oh, it looks like we're okay. Oh. Although we're, we're a bit delayed. Although we lost a bunch of viewers. That sucks, but well. Sorry, people. That's Twitch. Because it's it's yeah, we, it, we can tell if something's happening on our end and nothing's happening on our end. So Twitch hates us. Twitch hates board gamers. I said it. Prove us wrong, Twitch. Put us on the front page. You, you're not down. <laughs> you won't do it. You, you, don't got, you don't got the guts. All righty. So, Mike, there is a buckle on this belt. We'll come back and hit that with silver later. A buckle? Yeah, there's a, it's on this side right here. So, like, is this whole big fat thing the oh, belt yeah. to you? Oh, yeah. To me, okay, that's the There's like belt. a little chain beneath it. Yeah, so that will, again, we'll come back with silver. We'll do that last, though. So, don't worry about that right now. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. So, that, remember that bit earlier where, like, is this pelvis? I'm pretty sure that is pelvis. No, oh, I don't need to update it right now. Thank you. I need... Oh gosh, mega buffering. Yeah, sorry about that. Twitch, Twitch has been having mega issues with that. We have been dealing with that on many fronts. Yeah, sometimes it's not, sometimes our internet out here uh, in the boonies, and by that I mean just a giant metropolis, um, can be pretty bad. But it's actually been really solid for a actually long time. not us. Yeah. So it's nice. This, I'm glad he chose black over brown because the brown would have blended into the burnt orange, which is a good choice, by the way. I really like that burnt orange a lot. It just seemed like a cool color. I don't know. You know? It yeah. just spoke to me. Trying to get in here. Trying not to hit anything because this black will be more difficult to cover up than... The bone, which is why we did the bone first, as Mikey said, was just so, because if you end up hitting something else, it's like, whatever, any other color is going to cover up this very pale bone color. So it doesn't really matter, but if we did, like, black first, trying to cover up the black with this pale bone will take stressful a couple layers. Yes, now we're getting into the nitty gritties, Mikey. Wait till we start highlighting. <laughs> and so this little flap Mike and I decided was part of the belt. I don't really know. But here's the thing. Once you paint it that way, people will read it as that. So even if it's not, it doesn't matter. This is our world. Choice. It's like Bob Ross. You want a little tree right there? Put a little tree right there. You want this to be part of the belt? Make this part of the belt. Boom. And now it looks like it's part of the belt. Okay. So now we're on to the boots. Uh, Why are you aing? Huh? Why are you aing? Ugh. She started with a boot that doesn't have a bone sticking out of it. Oh, you know, yeah. Welcome to the mini paint, Mikey. You're on the paint stuff two, three times because you keep touching. The worst I always do, and I do this all the time, is I'll be painting on something over here, and I'll be moving my hand away, and I'll just go boom and just like run it across my entire mini. And yeah. then like I just have a big like blue splotch in the middle of the skin, and I'm just like, cool. So I have to redo all of that, which means I have to redo it, rehighlight it, all this stuff, and it's a freaking nightmare, and I hate it. Um. Um, alrighty. Okie doke. Should I be too worried about hitting the base or just let, let nope, it Nope, don't worry about the base. The base we will paint later. Let it and rip. we'll paint it this kind of darkish purple. The other bases are that kind of light blue, so it's a little... I mean, it's, in the end, don't ever worry about hitting bases. Because the base will be painted either black or some other color. We can do as many layers as we want. 
So the base is there as a whatever, hit it as much as you want. Um, yeah, so if anyone has any questions, please, please feel free to uh, pop them in. Pop them in. Pop them in. What are y'all up to? What have you been playing lately? What's been grabbing your eyeballs? Your What's been grabbing eyes? your eyeballs, Mike? We played taverns last night, so you, this is your second time playing. You played it over the summer. You really loved it. So is it, is it holding up for you? I really enjoyed it. I was I was a bit too sick to like love anything, to be honest. <laughs> That's fair. But um, I should wash out your brush too. Yeah. But I really enjoyed it, and I look forward to playing it when I have more of my mind about me. Yeah, you crushed too. So. Yeah, it's fun to put together. I mean, it's like kind of like Quacks. You're just hoping to put together like a super cool combo. Um, you know, you're and there's a bit of luck involved and stuff. It doesn't play like Quacks. I mean, it's a deck builder. There's always luck involved, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it was really fun. I'm really excited to play that Crystal Palace game. Yeah, um, I think it's gonna be really quite quite good. It seems pretty heavy, right? Um, I think it. I think it will be because I think I just think there'll be a lot to think about because there's this whole thing about like basically your money and all that and. You have dice, but you're not rolling out the dice. You're choosing how valuable they are, but you have to pay for that. Every pip basically yeah, has to right. pay a dollar, or pay a pound. And so it can be really expensive if you want the good stuff, and you got to be able to kind of do that without getting stuck into like, you know, loan, yeah, loan cycles city. and stuff. Because that's right. You said if, if you don't pay back a loan, it's like negative 15 points. But even if you just get a loan, it's still negative five points. Five points. And Gosh, if you that's pay rough. it off, and if you don't pay it off, it's like minus eight to 10 points. That's a lot. So it's like you you want to avoid the loans, but it probably will be impo imp impossible, impossible to, to not so. avoid, you know, yeah. at least once. So it's gonna be an interesting thing of of kind of this management. You kind of you're basically prepping for the first World's Fair in 1851. So you play five rounds, which are in 59, 16, 61, or something like that, or 49, 15, 51, one of those, um, and uh, or 51, two, three. Um, and so it's cool because you're trying to like go up the buzz and you're trying to get prototypes of things built. You can get patents for like a gramophone or something. You know, for old grandma? Tiny, old timey stuff. Yeah, you get a patent on grandma. Hey, grandma. Hey, grandma. Hello, son. Hello. And then you can build a prototype, hopefully, to score points and stuff. And you can use... Oh, no. <laughs> dude, the, the mini painting heavy side coming out, dude. Welcome to my life all the time, dude. Oh. Welcome to my, you know what's the best is when you wet blend a tail for like, you know, an hour and a half or so, and then later on you just smack it with some gold, and you're like, cool, tight. <laughs> this game's fun. Um, yeah, so you're trying to prep for the World's Fair, you're trying to get like some buzz, you're trying to become, you know, people are like, whoa, these guys are going to be coming up in here hot with all this goodness. Oh, this good, good. Um, so I'm really excited. Yeah, I love the theme. Yeah, it's cool. It kind of culminates with the first World's Fair. I want another World's Fair, man. Why can't we do another World's Fair? I feel like it'd be a healing thing for the world right now. I really do. Right? Everyone come together and just being like, yo, look at all this crazy crap. Yeah, like, look at all these innovations and stuff. And, like, let's come together and, like, let's move collaborate. And let's work together. Let's like, make all climate forward. change and stuff like that. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's cool. just like, it'd be super, super cool. I don't know how it works with World's Fairs. It's yeah, just like either. people have to agree to do it or what, how that works. Well, I my mean, guess it would probably work something like the Olympics where it's like you have to bid for it to be in your city and stuff like that. Oh, I imagine, yeah. Right? Like you'd have to have the infrastructure for it. Which, I mean... I think it's fair to say I've done goof this belt. I gotta go up in here with some bone business. Oh. That's fine. Finish up the belt, then go in with bone. Like, finish it one thing at a time. Don't try and, like, fix stuff. Unless it's very, very, very easy and small. Don't try and fix it as you go. Just finish it up. At least this is how I do it. Get get whatever's, you know. Just get it done, then go back and fix it. Because if you're trying to fix it during, you'll probably get more frustrated. And to me, at least, it's just easier to, like, just keep going and then touch it up later. Also, because what I'll do is I'll do all the base coats. Then I'll go do all the touch-ups. Because here's the thing. Now, again, this isn't quite as big of a deal because we have a wet palette, but it's like, okay, say I messed up the bones with the cloak. Okay, then I got to go back and touch it up. Then I mess up the bones with the belt. Okay, got to go back and touch it up. So my thing is like, just do all the base coats. Yeah. Then touch up all the bone parts. Then touch up all the cloak parts or whatever, and then just That's do it like that. Thing. You know, yeah. so it's like that way you don't have to constantly go back and touch stuff up, back and touch stuff up. Um, 
Ooh, Steve's got that Raj's goodie box on the way. What? I want that. I know. What does it do? I meant to look for it. (coughs) (coughs) Let's just Woo! I was all like, what is the goodies box? What's in it? Oh, we actually are looking at this. I actually just flat out forgot to paint part of the bones. (laughs) Whoops. Pretty happy with this. Looks great, dude. Yeah. Alrighty, fam. So that is. Whoop. Okay. Whoop. So. Boop, boop. So how do you want to do the um. The sword. So it's got a really long uh, hilt. It does. So this part know. up here will be silver. We know that. Yeah. And we'll probably throw a little bit of uh, like agrax earth shade on it to give it kind of a maybe a nice and bright and flesh shade. Give it a little bit of rust vibe. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, but what should we do for the hilt? Do you want we? I don't think we should have it be mm. the same because then it's just one giant gold piece. Yeah, like a brown hilt, maybe. Yeah, maybe we could do is we can do. Uh, where's my XV88? We can do like XV88, which is kind of like this is my go-to like leather brown. Yeah, because like it also yeah. darken up a little bit. So we can do like leather brown uh, to the end, and it looks like there's some straps on it. Yeah, it's kind of like so we can have that be leather that. brown, and then we can have the rest be silver. So he's just not sure additional modules. This everyone says like I don't know. So there's just stuff for the game. Little, it's, it's a bunch of little stuff, you know. So I want to know what little things. I know. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. You having a good time, Maggie? Loving it, man. Are y'all having a good time out there? I'm Woo! having a good time. I like doing this. And it's nice to paint with someone. It is so fun to learn from you. All righty. So, just BT Dubs, tomorrow on our YouTube channel, we have a very cool video coming out that we're very excited about. We're doing our top 10 games of the decade. The whole decade. The whole dang decade. Oh, now it looks like we have uh, something happened to us. What happened? Um, we dropped 12% of frames. Yeah, for a second. That's weird. All right. Now we got problems, too. Um... But, uh, yeah, so we have a, uh, a uh, top ten games of the decade. We're going year by year, going 2010, each saying our favorite game from that year. Then going 2011, going all the way up through 2019. Should be a cool video. We're very excited about it. Uh, Mike was brilliant. I was like, dude, we should do a top ten games of the decade. It's the end of the decade. And I was like, oh, that's great. So, um, so yeah, so check out that video on our YouTube channel. Make sure to follow us over on YouTube. We're just the Brothers Murph. And if you like what we're doing, make sure to follow us on our own Twitch, which is down down here. My arm got cut off, but if my, if my arm extended, it would be here. It's right. It's right there. It's right there. It's all there. Yeah, that's where it is. Hey, dang. <laughs> okay, so now Mikey, try says, and... I like when you paint. I want to paint. I don't know, man. So I got to thread the needle here. Huh? Try and not to touch the hands. Watch me work. Sorry, Nick. Paint on camera. That's good. Good idea. Good general practices. Oh, God, the hilt goes, like, through his... Neely went on In this. between his dome and his... Ooh. Nick touched the hand. Because he sucks! God! Basically, you don't know, rage quit every minute at some point. You know I did it, right? Oh, yeah, there's definitely times you just got to walk away. You just got to be like, nope, nope. Yeah? Not to say, like, say, oh, oh, yeah. I'm going to come back to that later. Yeah, yeah, just because you get, it's just hard, man. Like, especially when you're trying to, like, do really smooth blends or something like that. I mean, I, I kind of had to do that. Last time I was painting on YouTube, I, I kind of had to, it was just, I was just not, it ended up being fine, but I was just not painting to the ability that I wanted to. And I, I eventually had to be like, all right, I'm going to leave because, like, I'm going to start getting really upset if I keep painting, so... So, question, are you doing the whole cross thing in this color, too? No, just the straps. I would say just paint the straps kind of haphazardly because we'll go back and touch it up with the silver anyway. I mean, don't necessarily just, like, you know, slot the whole thing with it. But you don't need to be too, too precise with this because we'll touch it up with the silver anyway. And really, you know what we should probably do? 
go ahead and finish. But what we what I usually do in this situation is I'll just paint the silver first, and then just paint the brown on top of it. Yeah. To, so then you don't have to try and thread the needle with the silver, and especially with something like this where you have it's a raised edge like this. Raised edges are easier to paint. Right. Because you can come through and kind of just kind of just touch it like boom boom, and you'll only ever hit the raised edge. <laughs> As long as you're not like smashing the brush in there, it won't really matter. So I'm kind of painting this for no reason. Steve this says 2010 decade giants. Heck yeah, all giants. I'm, I'm watching the winter meetings uh, with every moment, just waiting to find out news on Bumcar. Was it Cameron Crow or something that went to the Yankees? Garrett Cole or yeah. Cameron Crow? Yeah, same person. Nine years, over three hundred million dollars. So insane. Can't wait for that video. It should be quite interesting. I'm glad, Mr. Soul. Thank you. Please give it a share if you don't mind. You know. Yeah, we want to get the word out. Get everyone starting to reflect on the decade. Can only do it once a decade, you know. I know. That's why it's exciting. It's like, man, we can't do this for a whole ten years. Yeah, I'm sorry, I need to grab it. Um, alrighty, fam. So we're gonna be on to some silver here in a bit. And sorry if we're we're buffering a bit. Our our now our we 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 talk too much crap, Mikey. We talk too much crap. Twitch found out. Because now, oh, yeah? now our our internet's being like, mm, you said that sometimes I mess up. Maybe I should do that now. But so this is where we're going right now. We're going pretty good. And again, this will all have more detail once we uh, throw some shade on it. All right, Mikey. Throw some shade on we're it. We're gonna th not that. So we're gonna do <laughs> silver. Go to <laughs> our thing. And um, by the way, yeah. There's, this part, I'm probably gonna regret this, but. If you was curious, this is our mini painting setup right here. Woo! And there's you, the chat. That's the chat right there. Whoa! But nonetheless. So this is our mini painting setup. This is from we'll Hobby Zone. So it's got all these spots for brushes Super and all cool. this kind of stuff. Now let me somewhat attempt to get this back in the right place. Looks pretty good. Hey, cool. Good job, Nick. <laughs> That's assume I was like, well, this is not going to work at all. So let's actually have this straight. Um, okay, so Mike, we're going to use a little lead belcher. I only have two silvers. Um, but if I'm doing that, it's because I don't have much left in here. And I am trying to get those. Oh, well, I have all of oh, them. Brand new. Yeah. It's a good sound. So we use lead belcher, which is my uh, darker of the two silvers I have. So we'll do lead belcher. We will shade it, and then we'll come back in with some, uh, what's it called? Something lighter silver. And now metallics, we don't thin down. You can thin down metallics, but it's not really great if you just do it with water. Okay. So, but you usually don't need to anyway. Because metallics are one of the things you're not generally doing like thin coats of metallics. You kind of just put metallics on Interesting. Unless you want to paint. Uh, I do want to paint. NMM. -M. Mike, you do not want to paint NMM. -M. I know. M&M? -M? NMM. Non-metallic metal. So non-metallic metal is, is non metal. you painting metal. Just painting it. I don't get it. Like painting on like a pewter mini? No. Uh, you are painting what metal would look like. But with metal metal paint, this is? No, this is using metallic paint. This has shininess, which makes it look like metal. Non-metallic metal, you are painting it with normal non-shiny paints and you are giving it reflections, painting in reflections with like white paint and stuff like that. Oh. Here's the thing Why? though. Because it looks way cooler. Does it? <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll show you some uh, non-metallic metal that is incredible. But it is, it's also kind of a swag move because it show it honest to God shows a... Skill level. Yes, a skill level because it's very, very difficult to do. Um, oh man. Yeah, so non-metallic metal, that's kind of when you get to the next level. I have thought about messing around with it, and then instantly was like, nah, because it is incredibly difficult to do well. But if you can, it looks freaking tight. That's wild. Yeah. Just a straight baller move, huh? Be like, I don't need no uh, glitter in here. You can just leave that out. I'll do it myself. Yeah, pretty much, honestly. It's... it's it's a, a pretty big swag move. It is impressive uh, 
doing stuff like that. Like one thing I like and why I like the Taverns of Tiefenthal cover you were asking last night when I thought about it, why I like it so much, is it's hard to like paint light and glowing. Yeah, it is. And so like Taverns of Tiefenthal, the cover is like like a glowing, nice, warm, comfy tavern. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> and so it's like, it's a cool thing like those Thomas Kincaid paintings because it's just everything looks like glowing light. But yeah. it's like, you have to do that with yellows and things and hues. You do. You do. You create that and it's very impressive. It's very difficult to do. And I quite appreciate it. Yeah, oh, screw it. Just paint over the whole thing. And this is why we paint the straps on afterwards. Do, 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 do. Oh, if you want to see fantastic. Really... Thank you. Well, thanks. Imagine you're talking about Nick's, but uh, I appreciate nah, it. Nah, yours looks just as good, dude. I'm pretty happy with it. You should be, man. Pretty stinking happy with it. Alrighty. Now, the real question, what this whole thing has been coming to. Oh, yeah, Mike, let's go ahead and paint on the chain. Right. And that little... Medallion, I'm going to make gold on mine. Now, again, the chain is raised, so really just try and, like, touch it. Get some paint on the end of your brush and just touch it. Oh, man, that's you're asking a lot, man. Oh, that didn't go well. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> that didn't work for me. <laughs> Michael, nail it. First try. Um... Now, the real question, what this entire thing has been culminating to, what color are we paint the squid? What color are we paint the squid? I'm thinking I'm going to do mine, like, pink with, like, blue polka dots. Because it's a squid, and I can do whatever the heck I want. Who is your thing? I don't know. I'll come up with, like, lime green. Do it. I would say just make it different than the rest of your model so it really stands out because it's a cool squid. All righty, fam. So, oh, he's got a little necklace on right, right. up here. I think I'm going to do that one gold for me. If we're going to do that, then I'll do a gold. I did the medallion over down here, silver. Okay. I'll do a gold chain. Gold chain. Um, so, like, what, like a lime green. Should I go like this crazy lime sure. green? Sure. Moot green. Oh. This green is green. Let me brush one here. Touching my color shapers. <laughs> Told you don't take, don't touch those. Don't, don't look touch, at them. Don't touch my color shapers. Why are they called color shapers? I don't know actually. Uh, I'm by that name as well. Whoop. Alrighty, I'm gonna put this on here. We're gonna paint up that squid. Then we're gonna go touch up the straps on that sword, Mikey. And then it's probably about to be time to wash. We are wash. I wish you all. Ooh, look at that. So we're getting some gold. You can see a great view of my arm. Very exfoliated. Very nice. Very nice. for a chain. Mm -hmm. We might want to go back later and put a dark gold on here, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Dark who what? This gold is just kind of, at least for me, it's similar to the coat and it's light enough where it's, it doesn't really blend into the bones, but just personally, I kind of want a little more contrast because everything in mini painting is contrast. Everything. You want to make a mini look better? Add more contrast. Contrast is everything. You want dark, very dark to very light. Contrast is everything. And you're everything. You're my everything. I said it. Hmm. Alrighty. What 
Took a row. No, let's just make him go like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. ah, out of focus. <laughs> Whoa. Um, okay, I'm gonna give me uh, the light pink down there. So I'm down with the seat. Gonna do see this is, any this is still later. usable. I've had this I've had this paint paint pot probably since I started penny mating like five or six years ago. That's awesome. Now sometimes they will dry out. I mean if you have it for like six, seven years, there's not much we can really do about it. So uh, it's a little gloopy, but I think we make it work. Big pink squid, big pink squid. He is a big freaking pink squid. That's what his song's called, Big Pink Squid. It's Big Squid. It's Big Squid and a big squid squid. Big squid squid. Big, big squid. Squid. And that's a big bass. And this, I kind of talked about this a bit during our... Uh, our painting class on Sunday, but just uh, the reason why I like mini painting is because it's reassuringly restrictive and creatively freeing. And what I mean by that is there is it's you're, you're essentially a three coloring book, which means you have to color in the lines to a degree. Again, you could just like slop paint everywhere and whatever, but it wouldn't look very good. And you wouldn't really be painting at that point. You would just be throwing paint on a 3D object. Um, so it's like this squid right here. I can't really decide without modifying it in some way to make this squid something else. Um, like... This squid is a squid, or like his bones. Like I can't really decide that this guy is a real person, right? Because he so has bones are laid out for you, despite his weird kind of human arms. Right. It's like it's laid out for you. So in that way, it's very restrictive because you kind of have to follow the rules of whatever it, whatever it is. What's up, Missy? Hi, Missy. Uh, you have to follow those rules. But here's the thing, that kind of restriction, that kind of structure is something that most of us actually really like. I like structure. Almost everyone does. We all like to pretend that we don't, but we do. And so... Thank you, Quicksand. Quicksand likes my color choices. They pop really well. Well, fine. No, you're right. The blue and the green, is, you look outstanding. I like this yellow, but it does kind of blend in, but I do like it. Yellow. This guy's got oh, a great cloak. Super cool. If you ever paint, if you ever build minis out there, build them with cool cloaks. That's what makes minis look cool. Cool yeah. cloaks. Um, so I actually like that restriction of mini painting, but then at the same time, it's creatively freeing because you're like, I can do whatever I want within this structure. Right. I can make this squid pink. Mike can make this squid green. I can paint this cloak whatever color I want. Hell, I can make his. <coughs> his I can make him gold bones. I can make him sweet, like blinged out gold. That guy. So it's really, really creatively freeing, but yeah. it's creatively freeing in a really kind of rigid structure. It's the nice thing is it gives you a direction to go. You know this, this, and this are like set. You got to do that. And then from within that, now you can make all these choices, which I think is easier than like yes. a blank canvas. Well, I, made, I made the example. It's like it's like when your teacher says, write a paper on anything. And right. everyone goes like, can you give us any kind of guideline like any category on of <laughs> america me. on plants whatever but yeah. like having no guidelines is really difficult yo what's up hey Rip. cricket rookie how you doing baby we are painting some uh bone devils from rum and bones baby. bone devils and sorry if it's uh buffering our, our now our thing is being silly and stupid um and missy says i just remember that you're doing this i'm trying to clean the game shelf and put away games uh, like, are you trying to organize and stuff? And if so, what's the method? What are you, how are you going about it? You know? So he says, oh, you mean like playing board games? True. Board games is the same thing. The best board games 
probably have multiple paths you could take to victory. Yes. And they set up structures in which you get to then choose what you would like to do. Yes. The best games have lots of choice. Um, so, Mikey, while that's drying, I'm going to put some polka dots on mine. This is going by theme and whatever fits. Nice. I'm going to go ahead and redo these straps. To last... I'm going to just keep my guy green. I don't know. Tons That's fine. You don't, you don't have to do anything else. I think I'm going to leave it. Simple. I love it. One might call you a simpleton. My straps are decent. I think keep them. My, I, I ended up just painting over the entire thing because I was annoyed. I'm going to leave well enough alone. Try not to fiddle with it when I don't need to. And yeah. here's the thing. These are just for a, a board game. No one's going to look at these. Like, you don't... People get too critical of their painting. It's like... You know, you want it just to be tabletop standard, which means, does it look good? Also, because I, I mentioned, you're looking at a mini from all the way over here, generally. Yeah, from here. This like, yeah, perfect. if you start looking at this like this, it looks like crap, because it's very, di that's why, like, one thing I do, because I'm trying to really improve my mini painting, what I do is I take, like, really nice photos of it, because then you can zoom in, you can really see how not great I painted that. <laughs> But it's like, but no one looks at minis like this. Like, no one. Which that's that's how much you're zooming in. I mean, that's the thing about it. It's like, it passes the eye test. That's all that And matters. that's all it is, exactly. It's like, it looks great. And you're like, that looks so cool. Yeah. And again, if you really start to break it down, sure, it's not quite as good as it looks, but it still looks fine. And that's the thing. And so it's like, you have to understand where are you looking at something from? Like, are you looking at it from here? Or are you going to look at it when it's down on a table? If you look at it's down on a table, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. Steve says I switched over to a simpler task. Good. You can multitask easier that way. <laughs> no, 100% quick set. I'm generally all about the bright colors. I generally paint yeah, things more like super that. super cool, man. I really love the yellow that you got for that. Yeah, I really like the really cloak. Cool. I really like this cloak is dope. All right, I'm going to I'm going to smack on some some polka dots onto this this bing bong right here. Oh, that's what I like about it. See, they can have very similar things but very different in a couple ways. Both are super valid. Wow. So sick. So after this, what's going to be the next step? Shading. Shading. That seems terrifying. Yeah, and actually... I just realized something. I need to bring a palette next time as well. Shade but palette? It's not so much a shade palette. It's just a... Because shades are, are very, very liquid. Uh, oh. It's going to be hard to kind of keep them on here. We probably can. This will be fine. All right, so I don't know how well you can see them. My guy's getting a little pocket dots now. That is awesome. That's very cool. Yeah, why not? Um, okay, so that is it, people, for the for the base coat. So now we're going to go in with some shading. So now we are going to... Mine's going to be a little bit easier than Mikey's because I have a lot of, uh, of similar colors in mine. Mine are all kind of warm, dusty tones, as, as Quicksand so rightly said. Um, so I am mostly going to be shading with... Uh, what is called, I'm basically going to shade most of mine in what's called Agrax Earth Shade, which is a, a brown one. It should be a big one, the most empty one. Yeah, because I use it a lot. <laughs> um, so you can see, this one is most, that's a lot of shade that I've used. So I'm going to use Agrax Earth Shade, which is a brown shade, which you can see on my uh, paper towel here, which you can't see because it's also white, but it's, no, I'm going to put it on camera. You can see, it's like a brown shade. You can see up there. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to be shading mine in. Okay. For yours, you should shade the bone and the pants with these. We're not going to shade the boots because there's no point. Because putting a black shade on black doesn't really do anything. Okay. But for you, your, um, we are going to use black shade. So let's go ahead and grab the gnome oil. Okay. That's our black shade. We're going to use this for the sword. Grab, um... Grab uh, Drakenhof Nightshade. It's one of the smaller ones in the front right. You put that there for me. That's what we're going to shade your cloak with because this is a blue shade. Um, and then for your green one, we... Um, grab me the Cilia Green Shade. 
we're gonna use this, which is kind of like a, a blue green shade. And then for mine, I'm probably still gonna do mine in Agrax Earth shade because mine's pink and pink and brown. Let me double check this real quick, actually. I actually can't quite remember what this looks like. So. so since this is so thin, do you just dip into the thing itself, the paint pot, and have that? Uh, generally, yeah, and that's what we'll do in this case because usually what I pull it out into a thing and then I do it. So, no, I lied. Grab me uh, the green one on top, the Milton Grand. Let's see this one. But we may use uh, a, a Thonian Camo shade instead. <laughs> How do you know all these names? Because I've been painting for a while. Man. This is... No, we can use it. That's that's fine. We'll use Beauty Grand. Beal Tan Green, not Beauty Grand. Beauty uh, Grand. Yeah, I've done this a while. <laughs> that's impressive, man. So that's first thing, impressive. let's go ahead. Um, let's grab you a different brush. Um... True up the edge a little bit. We don't want to leave it all frayed. I didn't true up the edge, guys. My true didn't true up the edge. Got to true up the edge. Got to true up the That's edge. That's something I've learned from today. True up the edge. True up the edge. More frequently than I do, so I don't ruin his brushes. Yeah, a little bit. I do you like make your own brushes. You can ruin those ones. You got. Um. So what's the point to switching? Just I, I just I tend to use those for paints. I tend to use these more for washes. Probably isn't honestly much of a reason. I just tend to do it. Uh, there's not really that much of a reason. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, okay. So this actually, we're just going to come bring out, um, where is our spot that we can actually do this? So you get more parchment paper? Nah, that's fine. So I'm just going to go boom. Just cause we're using a lot of this. Oh no, one on our tablecloth. Who cares? That's what it's there for. So our tablecloth is for folks. Okay. So this is going to be for the bones and pants. Bones and pants, yes. And so so we're basically getting it on, and we're just going to be kind of slopping it on here. So you don't have to be crazy precise. Yeah, let's not do the entire thing. Like, if you're doing the, the chest, just do the chest, and then we'll come and pick up the recesses, and then, uh, I'm sorry, pick up the excess. Then we'll, like, move on to the pants. Uh, you don't want to do the entire thing all at once because a lot of it will dry before you have a chance to really kind of clean it up. Okay. Because we want it. Do the face as well or just Yeah, do the face as well. That's totally fine. Oh, we got a little tongue sticking out. We'll have to paint that paint a little later. This guy's actually got a, a really good expression. I did not see until. I don't know. It's getting like, ah! Yeah. So basically, Mike thinks then on your paper towel, go ahead and wipe it out. And true then. Of the edge. True of the edge. Always spin it. Whenever you're wiping, always spin your brush. And then, I am not painting on screen, Nick. Uh, you weren't kidding about newbie painting. Yes, indeed. I said, Mikey's painted like two minis. So, that is that is the uh, the whole thing. It's the best. You want to pull in the recess, but not too, too much. And it's just going to bring out a lot of those details. We want... It to pull a decent amount in the eye sockets though, because we want those to stay like dark. Yeah, I think I'm doing okay for being a beginner. I'm into it. Nick's yeah. a good teacher, of course. Yeah, he, he, Mike's doing great. And again, we're keeping it simple. You know, we're we're going base coat, wash, bit of highlights, and that's gonna be it. You know, it's like, again, yeah, these are just these are just like the minions. They're not the the heroes. If we ever get to the point where we're doing the heroes, then yeah, that would be a a decent amount more work. But like. It's how you gotta start, you know. So what do you think of this? Like, is this decent? I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you could have even left, even probably leave a little more on. So that's why I think I always end up taking too much off. That's good. I'd rather take it more off than leave too much too on. much on. Yeah, because you can always take put more on, but you can't really take it off once it's yeah. done. Cool. Yeah, man. So I'm moving on to the pants here. Oh, okay. So I just I'm just cruising. Rip. The pants, you can probably be a little bit more liberal about, liberal about leaving it on because of the fact that this has really, you have a lot of folds, and those folds will end up being pretty darn dark, so. And that's okay. Yeah. Okay. 
because we really want it to look like three dimensional. Sarah says, "No, it's not about just busting your chops. That's all good. We we're ah, into you're it. Good. You're Bust good. away. Bust away. Busting your balls. I love it. Busting our basket balls. But specifically, Sacramento Kings. How are they doing this year? Probably horrible. I have no. I could not even begin to tell you." And with shading, Mikey, what you also need to make sure you do is when you move on to another spot, every once in a while come back and look at another spot because gravity will make it so it slowly sinks more and more down. Ew. And so you may, be, you may look fine now, but in 10 minutes, all of a sudden the bottoms of like this spot right here, like by his pelvis, which will tend to gather a lot, may be full of shade. And you're like, where did that come from? But it's because it just the whole thing moved down. I'm actually going to shade that pelvis a little more because I want... Some more contrast. And I really want some contrast up here in these ribs. I want to make sure that there's definitely some pool going into those tiny, tiny little lines in between these tiny ribs. Little riblets. So that it makes sure make sure that it looks like he actually has ribs. Make sure it looks like he got them ribs. Gotta get them ribs. Zester and Chris uh, Bannon Squad, how are y'all doing today? Yeah, how's how your you? Wednesday treating you? I'm going to go ahead and move on to the arms. Sure. Did you do a split? It's a little footsie. I did not do a split. I will. That's a good call. He's got human arms. That's why he's so powerful. <laughs> no rot over there, man. Hey, no rot in these arms, man. Uh-uh. He ain't super jacked, but he got human arms. He really rubs into the other bone devils. He's like, look at my human arms. My arms are super cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, got, they got bone hands, the bosons. Why does this guy get weird human arms? They call him human arms. Why do they call him that? Because he's a, he has human arms. Have you ever seen him? <laughs> like, good call, Frank. Very clearly has human arms. <laughs> Shade in up. Shading up. What's Shade your is favorite nice. part of painting? Favorite stage? Aside from basing, we'll say. Um, uh, highlighting. I I absolutely abhor base coating. I really do not like the base coating process. <laughs> so what we did just now. Yes. Because it's <coughs> monotonous and it's... The, the MIDI is, pardon my French, but it's in what I call the ass phase. <laughs> Ass um, face, because nothing ever looks. It doesn't good. look good. It just looks plain. Shading is nice because it brings out a lot of the details and stuff. But like, I hate base coating. I hate it. One, it's also anxiety inducing because I'm always like, oh, what should, I, what color should I paint this? And it, it's like, but highlighting is nice because highlighting is going to make stuff look dope. And so I really like highlighting. I really, I, I'm like shading. I really, really dislike base coating. Interesting. Cool. Well, there you go. There you have it. So, are you uh, Dunzo, Mr. Yeah. Dunzo? Dunzo. Oh, hold on. Okay, so... A bit too much pool. Hold on a second. Okay. So, you done all your brown, right? All the stuff's going to be brown for you? Yeah. Okay. So, let's move on. Have you... Because I'm still... I'm just going to be... I'm going to be Agrax Earth Shading all day. So, um, put out a teeny bit. Actually, put out a, a, a some Drakenhof Nightshade, like over here. Drakenhof Nightshade, we're going to thin down... a teeny bit because okay. it Where is you say to put it just like down somewhere and then uh grab me that clear one that's called lamian medium we're gonna fit it with this yeah oh, well, it doesn't make it. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah good good marketing citadel that's written in white why <laughs> whatever okay um we're probably gonna thin it down a teeny bit just uh some more. More. <laughs> more. That's fine, probably. You go and wash a brush out, then put in like two uh, brushfuls of this. And we're going to thin that down because the Dragon Up Nightshade is crazy strong. Like, it is really freaking blue. I mean, really blue, which is cool. But it is just crazy blue. You should put this like off to the side first. And then yeah, yeah, and then you can mix it in, sure. Eh, do a little more. A little more? More. A little more. <laughs> You're not good. I wasn't doing that just to mess with you, by the way. No, I know. 
So that'll, that'll thin it down a little bit. It won't make a huge, huge difference, but uh, it'll be nice. So go ahead and do the... Oh, that's brown. That's blue neck. Don't grab that. Um, <coughs> so, yeah. Is this so, cloak and headband? Uh, yes, and the headband, yes. Just try not to touch the skin because it's going to turn the skin blue. And this is also why... I tend to use really small brushes for shading because... Uh, you kind of want to be... It's weird because like shading is both really not precise because you're just slopping it on, but it also kind of has to be super precise because Ooh, you yeah. don't want to hit stuff like... You want to slop on the right area. Yeah, especially if you're using something as strong as uh, Dragonhoff Nightshade. It's like you really don't want to hit something that's not blue with it because it is... Doesn't that have an appropriate name? Like, that sounds like a strong color. Yeah, Dragonhoff Nightshade. Nightshade. Sounds like a sweet, sweet name. Yeah. I would love to name uh, Citadel Paint Rangers. Ooh, Shopty Bone. <laughs> Drookie I Violet. <coughs> Emperor's Children Pink. It was like, cool. You're like, all right. I got you, Frank. It's like, dope name, right? And you're like, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. How's that going? I think it's good. Good. Because we're going to come back and highlight a bit of that. So if it darkens it down significantly, that's okay. Because we're going to come back with the base coat anyway. So, Although we won't do that today. Oh, well, we're almost out of time. Holy crap, that went fast. Uh, although we got... I mean, this is this is basically... This is where I think a lot of beginners more or less should stop. I mean, because this base is coat absolutely shade, serviceable. You're so fine. I remember the first time you showed me a wash. And I was like, whoa! <laughs> yeah. Because it, like, automatically makes it look dead. Yeah. Like, it really does. Like, you could... If you didn't care to go any further, you could just do, do a base coat, do a nice little base coat, do a wash on it. Leave it be. Have at. Yeah. Yeah, you really don't need anything else. Especially like zombie and undead things. Just look kind of exactly. And whatnot. Which is why I want to start with these, because they're <coughs> undead. You know, undead are, are not necessarily easy to paint, but they are more forgiving. Because again, if it looks kind of weird sloppy, you're kind of like, whatever. Like, Damn. who cares? Like, let me think. Uh, let me see. Um, I would say put a little more in the recesses. Yeah. Like these big folds in the back. See how much I'm leaving in there? I'm going to be leaving <sighs> a little bit so too much. Paranoid. Yeah, I know. Good. It's better to be paranoid than be like, yeah, screw it. <laughs> there are more in the recesses. Just a little bit, not a ton. Because right. again, number one rule, penny penny, Mike, you want to make mini penny minis look good? Contrast. So think of that. Contrast. Yeah, that's true. Contrast is everything. That's a very good point. So I'm also doing a, a, the handle, the um, hilt of the sword with this brown shade. Yep, see on this part right here, it's, it's pooled in right there. I don't want that pooling right there. Okay. So that's it with a little bit of wash. I need to do this. Let's see. That's good. It's a little better? Yeah, that's good. It's still a part of the light side, but that's okay. That's okay. That's honestly totally fine. I'm a shade in my little square. Yeah, it's great by. impacts, as Mystic Skull. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, as Nick said earlier, no matter how well you paint, how beginner you are, this is going to look better than an unpainted gray yep. mini. Yep. All right, so I'm just shading in my little my yeah, little. Yes, so ask who should paint those my little side minis, man. Those things are. I really want to really paint cool. those. Super, super bad. I saw someone on Instagram painted the hell out of those things. Yeah, I'll bet. Alrighty, so now for this squid, I'm trying to pull most. Of this. I don't want to. What should I do for the squid? Uh, the Biltine, Biltan green. Biltan green. That you don't have to take out. You just put it straight out of the pot. Uh, I had to take the dragon because <coughs> I wanted you to thin it down a little bit. Is there anything? Oh, and then black, the black one for the silver. The, the sword? sword, yes. So boom. So got a little bit of shade on our uh, our squiddy. Now I will come back and, and hit it with some more pink because the thing about a shade is it's going to it's going to darken and tint everything, everything it take it touches. So like that bright bright pink now is 
less bright. Now again, it's still pink, so it's hard to, you know, it's hard to really bright to darken down pink too much. But you know, uh, I miss you too, Crookie. I really, really miss you. I know. I mean, I, I want to see you before the stream, but I just don't know if slash when we're gonna be able to. But dude. I miss you like crazy. And it's ass cream. Really, life is just dumb busy. Do you have the My Little Scythe news? Yes, we have My Little Scythe. I love it. We don't play it too often, but I love My Little Scythe. And you really, you probably like it even more than I do. I love it. I think it's incredibly charming. It's sweet because like Karen doesn't particularly like Scythe, but she'll play My Little Scythe. Yeah. And I'll get down on it. I think it's, I think it's an absolutely fantastic game. All right, Mikey, sword time. Sverds. So now this, but this one's orange. And this one, don't leave it on, don't have too much on. We just kind of want to darken it, give it a little bit of weathering, essentially, looking. You don't want to turn it black. So, wipe most of it away. We're mostly doing it for some coloration. We're going to then murder all that with a highlight anyway. So, this is not super, super crude. <coughs> it's mostly just to darken it down and, and where the blade kind of comes like this on the side of the blade. We kind of want that looking better. All righty. Oh, not sure. Must have touched the leg over here. See, in this, I don't know if you all can see that, but you can see there's a white rim on the boot. That's because I keep touching it with my hand. <laughs> Which you don't want to do. Which is why you should get some kind of holder. Even if it's just you putting on top of a pot, do it where you're not touching your mini. Because if not, you have to constantly touch stuff up like Nick. Remember that time you spent three hours wet blending a tail and then you keep touching with your hand so it's just... Wiped off a lot of the paint. Ruined anyway. Well, do a stream and I can take pointers from you as I paint. I'm down to my little side. That should probably be a really fun stream. My little side ones are. I, I I have a hunch they're gonna be deceptively hard because they're big smooth surfaces. Big smooth surfaces are hard to paint, but nonetheless, I think they're gonna be incredibly fun. All right, folks. All right, folks. Well, that's that's going to be it for today. I mean, honestly, we, we will come back and highlight these maybe on Friday and stuff like that. We'll, we'll continue on these exact models and highlight them and stuff. But uh, this is we this is think. where we got. I think it looks great. They look, look bad for two hours of work. I yeah, think. they look different. They look awesome. And again, this is totally serviceable. You paint that base a nice purple, put it next to this guy. They look great. You know, it's like this guy's highlighted, but it's like not too much more. You know, and it's like... That's awesome. Bam. And, you know, you're good to go. That's all you need. And they look great. So it's like, start mini painting. Paint some minis. Do it. Get at it. <laughs> uh, I want to thank you all so much for being here. Yeah. This was awesome. This is going to get kind of a trial runny kind of thing yeah. we're doing right here. Thank uh, you, Queen. We want to do these more often. So let Gen Con know that you, that you had just a blasty blast. The blastiest blast. The blastiest of all the blasts. Um, Indeed. And yeah, so we'll be back on Friday painting again. We'll be continuing these gentlemen. Um, and we will be uh, putting highlights on them. And then they'll be, paint the bases and they'll be done. These will be right, completely so we'll done. get so, into something else too. Maybe we'll start to take a look at my little side. Yeah, maybe we'll take a look and get a, get a game plan going. Um, but thank you all so, so much for being here. We really Very appreciate much. it. Tomorrow we have a big video coming out on our YouTube channel. Make sure to follow our YouTube uh, down here. Uh, actually, our YouTube's not down here, but... YouTube.com slash It's just the Brothers Murph, Murph wherever you want to go. Just search the Brothers Murph on YouTube. But, um, find us. but yeah, so uh, I hope everyone had a good time. Thank you so, so much for, for being here. Make sure to follow Gen Con on Twitch. They have a ton of really cool stuff coming out um, always on their channel. And they're really, really committed to Twitch, which is great because Twitch needs more people doing board game stuff and tabletop stuff. And, uh, um, you know, that's what we're trying to do. That's what Gen Con's trying to do, which is awesome. So good job, Mikey. That looks freaking rad. Thank you. Um, looks so cool. I'm very happy with it, man. Yeah, I love it. It's so cool. Can't wait to highlight it. I've never done that yeah. before. Yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. All right, everybody. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your evening. I uh, love see you all. Tomorrow. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Bye.